There is no individual more responsible for establishing the tradition of St. Mary's Colgan High School than Frank Crespino. Crispino was a student and player, a parent, teacher, and administrator, but most know him as coach. Crespino took over the helm at St. Mary's High School in 1961 and in 18 years won 416 games coaching football, basketball, and baseball. He won state titles in baseball in 64, 67, and 71, as well as finishing runner-up six times in his tenure that ended in 1975. In basketball, he was the head coach for only three years, but led the Panthers to a state runner-up finish in 1962. Crespino was best known as a football coach leading the Panthers to 153 victories in his 18 years, often as underdogs against stiff competition. He won consecutive state titles in 74 and 75 and was selected the Kansas Coach of the Year in 1975. His hard work, determination, and character became the qualities associated with St. Mary's Colgan Athletics that survives to this day. But it wasn't always that easy. His only losing season was his first, and Crispino remembers his beginnings at St. Mary's High School. When I first came to St. Mary's in 1961, and right after I got the job, Alex Gamaldi came up to me, and he said something to me that I'll never forget. He said, Frank, he said, the main reason you got this job and the strongest quality that you had was the fact that you had a chauffeur's license and you could drive a bus. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever forget that. <laughs> Crespino would drive the bus, fix the bus, fill cans with cement for barbells, and do whatever it took to build a winning program. Uh, basically, I guess I could start at the beginning. When I, when I was going to school here, our uh, practice field was located right where the high school is right now. And it was a chat field with no fence around it. And it wasn't unusual for a player to get knocked out in, in the street. And then uh, our facilities here, when I was a senior in high school, uh, our ceiling in the gym was so low that we played all of our games away from town. Nobody would play us on that court. And then as far as uh, the coaching facilities, uh, we, our weight room was downstairs in the gym, the old gym. Uh, we made our own weights. We didn't have enough money to buy any. And I think probably uh, the main thing that saved us was the attitude and the, of the players that we had and the willing to survive the, the things that we had to do. Coach Crispino is the first to admit that he had some good help along the way, but one guy in particular was his top lieutenant. Uh, yeah, Pat Forbes and I, for, uh, for 10 years, we consisted of the coaching staff here. Uh, Pat was my assistant in football and baseball, and I was assist his assistant in uh, basketball. And during that time, uh, we were an independent school, and we traveled all over the state of Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, trying to find anybody that would play us. And we had some very unique stories that happened during those years. And uh, a lot of those wins that I got in football and baseball, uh, Pat had a lot to do with it. Along with Pat Forbes, Coach acknowledges many others who went on to help build the Colgan tradition. Chuck Smith, when he was a student at the college, worked with me one year in football. And uh, it was very easy to see at that time that uh, he was going to be a very successful coach that he is today. And then Ed Martin one year worked with me. Uh, Tom Sy worked with me. Frank Diskin, Alvin Hobson, several different people along those lines. And, uh, but Pat Forbes and I basically consisted of the staff for a long time. Over 18 years, there were many players, so you would think it would be tough for Coach to pick one who might have been the best to play for him, but Coach leaves no doubt he has a definite choice. It's a difficult question, but i say probably uh, Steve Ferris, I think, was probably one of the toughest players we had, and he ended up uh, playing three years at Oklahoma State, and uh, I think that speaks pretty highly for him. But Coach Crespino is quick to point out that athletes like Steve Ferris were once in a career and that most of the teams and the St. Mary's Colgan tradition were built by a different kind of player. A lot of players here that uh, I think developed themselves and played above their level because we didn't have a lot of real outstanding players, but we had a lot of players with a lot of heart, kids that really give you everything they had. And I think that speaks fairly highly for the, the whole type of people we have here today. Uh, I think the teams that are playing here today, sometimes 
there's not a whole lot of exceptional talent, but they play so well together, and the coaches do such a good job with them, that they exceed themselves. And in 18 years, there were many big games, and one would guess the state championship would be coaches' most memorable, but anyone who thinks that doesn't know what is on the line when Colgan plays Frontenac. Probably uh, the first time we played Frontenac, we hadn't played them in 10 years. And I think uh, we played at Frontenac, and we were, uh, I think, a 20 or 30-point underdog. And uh, we happened to win that ball game. It was a big ball game for us, and on top of that, my old high school coach, Adolph Spigarelli, was the coach at that time. Uh, Frontenac and Colgan has been a, a great rivalry, and I think it's been very, the kids have always been very supportive of each other. And uh, there at one time, uh, we had beat Frontenac 10 years in a row. In fact, uh, the last year that I coached, they beat us twice. Uh, one year in the regular season and one year in the playoff. But I think the relationship between the school, two schools and the fact that uh, most of the parents were, were acquainted with each other, it made it a very big ball game, and it was one that we always looked forward to. Crespino teams went on to win 10 in a row in that series, many times as the underdog, with Crespino working his psychological and strategic magic. While winning against an arch rival was important, it was the state titles that put Colgan on the map as a state football power. Probably the first time that we won the state championship uh, in football was very big for us. And uh, just, just about every game had a unique thing to it, but the state championship definitely was a, was a big part of it. Coach also had the pleasure of coaching his son and to watch him follow his footsteps into the coaching profession. Uh, that was a very unique situation. I think it's, uh, it's a hard situation because sometimes I think you're harder on your own children than you would be other people. But uh, Craig wasn't an exceptional player. Uh, he was a good player. He played hard. He gave you everything he had. And he turned out to be a very good coach. Uh, I used to spend some time with him when he was coaching at Girard. And I'd go over and, and watch his practices and watch him prepare for the game. Uh, I thought I was pretty well organized, but uh, Craig put me in the shade. He was a very well organized coach. The kids loved him, and uh, he had an exceptional job, I think, at Girard. And uh, they still think a lot of him with Girard over there. Coach Crispino's other son, Kurt, continues the family tradition in the education field. Basically, we had the, uh, the good of two things. We had uh, Craig that loved sports. And Kurt was involved in other things, and drama, and debate, and speech. And uh, he has a real good job right now. He's the uh, vice chancellor of uh, planned giving at the University of Missouri in Kansas City. And he's also very talented in music and stuff like that. So we're very proud of both of our sons on the things that they've been able to accomplish. The Crespino family has been tested throughout the years with the hardships that life brings. Coach is a prime example of the importance of the underlying principle of the tradition he helped to build, his Catholic faith. That, uh, our faith, when we lost Craig, I really don't know if we'd ever made it without our faith and our religion and the support and, and so forth that we got from the priest. And uh, we still rely on our faith. We can very, uh, go to church every Sunday part of the Adoration Chapel, and our faith is a, a very strong point of our life. And now, after reaching 80 years of age, Coach still has something to say to his players, who are now men, about his time at Colgan and his years as their coach. I think probably the main thing that, that I would say that uh, I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to work with them and teach them at the school. I followed their careers. And uh, I'm very happy and proud of the things that they've been able to accomplish. And if I had maybe a small part to do with that, I'm very happy about that. Hall of Fame member, coach, mentor, and winner who still holds a chauffeur's license, congratulations to the man most responsible for building the St. Mary's Colgan tradition on and off the field, Frank Crispino.